my name is Carrie Allen, and just so you know where I'm coming from, I'm a pharmacist. I'm also a geriatric specialist pharmacist, some specialty in pharmacotherapy, and what all of that means is that I have a tremendous passion for caring for older people through my level of expertise, which is medications. So we don't always get a chance to talk about medications as much as I might like as a pharmacist, but here's a chance for us to talk about the updated beers criteria. And what that is is potentially, and I'm going to emphasize potentially, inappropriate medication use in older adults, which we're defining as about 65 years old. If you are unfamiliar with the beers criteria, we're going to go through that. And if you are totally familiar with it, we are going to maybe emphasize some of the changes and reiterate some of the things that we forget about or we just get so inured to. So if you're a caregiver or you're a nurse or you're a practitioner or you're a pharmacist, this is all applicable to you and I'm going to try to speak to all levels and, and not be confusing. Some places you can go is the website www.americangeriatrics.org. This is the American Geriatric Society. They have amazing information and they've partnered with the people who do the beers criteria to give you a lot of resources and to disseminate this to a lot more people. And that's what we're all about teaching you today. There's a smartphone app for the beers criteria that I have. It's free. It's wonderful. It has a lot of good information that anybody can read at any level. And it has lots of materials on the website, tables, handouts. They have a PowerPoint. If you as a clinician want to help present some stuff on Beers Criteria, you can do that. They're on Facebook, they're on Twitter, you name it. So the American Geriatric Society, they are wonderful and we want to help them in any way they can on our level of care in working with the Beers Criteria. Now when I was asked to do this presentation, I said to my husband, oh, I'm, I'm going to do a presentation on the Beers list. And I said, before you say anything, that's not a list about beers. And just so you know, if you're going to Google Beers, you will get a list of beers not Beers Criteria. So Google Beers Criteria if you're looking. But he said to me, I know that's not a list about beers. That's the list of medications that you're not supposed to use very much in older people because it can hurt them. And I thought to myself, my husband, who's a sixth grade social studies teacher, knows this because I must talk about it so much all the time at home that it's that important in my life that I didn't even realize it. it ha this list has seeped into my life and everything I do professionally, but I must mention it on a personal level as well for my husband to know that kind of thing. So what are these criteria? The first edition was about 20 years ago. It was for nursing homes specifically, and, and I want you to think in your head about those frail people way back in the day who were chained and tied to radiators, who were kept in plastic bags at night so people wouldn't have to change their diapers who were forced to room with people off the street just so the facilities could get money, who were chemically restrained, given so many chemicals that they were drooling and non-functional. I want to put you, that picture in your head because that's what we're aiming for. Now, we're way away from that now, but there's still some elements that we want to worry about. And this was meant originally to give guidance to nursing homes about medications that may do more harm than good in these vulnerable older adults. And that's what I'm thinking in my head when I think vulnerable. I never want that to happen to anyone. The last revision before this 2012 edition was in 2003. And then now in 2012, I'll explain a little bit more of what they've done. But it's, again, potentially inappropriate medication. I'm going to call them PIMS in individuals 65 and older. Now, this isn't related to the Beers criteria, but I did want to mention older is not just 65. We're coming out with all this information related to medications that have to do with 60, 62 years old, ages where you're thinking, is this elderly? Do I need to worry about it? And it really depends on the person and the situation. But for example, Celexa, the generic name of which is citalopram, it's an SSRI, which is a medication that's meant to increase your serotonin specifically and make you feel calm and less depressed. Well, 60-year-olds, we started to see people getting cardiac arrhythmias and those kind of things. The labeling for this drug has been changed by the FDA and the manufacturers to say that if you were 60 years old and you were taking over 20 milligrams, you were more at risk for those cardiac problems and we don't want you to take that. So the Beers criteria, yes, 65 and older, but if you have 
older adults that you're caring for that may have issues and you're thinking, well, that can't apply, you know, maybe it can. Maybe it'll be the Beers criteria. Maybe it'll be a specific medication like Celexa. But we're seeing more and more of that as FDA reporting regulations change.